Welcome back to the GCP Mindset channel. As you may know from our previous video, the essential documents of each clinical study are the study protocol, the investigator's brochure, and the case report form. Today, we will take a closer look on the case report form, more after the intro. The third important study document is the case report form, CRF. If you haven't already, watch our videos about the study protocol and the investigator's brochure first. You can find them above. Watch them. Then let's go on with the case report form. The CRF serves to document all relevant data according to the protocol and is an informational medium by which study data can be transmitted from the trial site to the data management. CRF exists in paper form, sometimes even on carbon paper as well as in electronic form. One CRF is filled in per patient. CRF need to be allocated to patients clearly in order to avoid confusion. The case report form is usually divided into five modules with thematically related contents, reflecting the chronological sequence of the study. The first module refers to screening. In addition to the date of written consent, the compliance with inclusion and exclusion criteria are also recorded here. Demographic data are acquired. Results of physical examinations are recorded. Vital signs and laboratory parameters are documented and previous diseases, as well as the medical history are noted. Here you see an example of the way the compliance with inclusion and exclusion criteria is documented in the CRF. Under the heading Enrollment Criteria, those conditions are listed, which are absolutely necessary for inclusion in the study. To check the box, no here is a wrong entry. If it is checked, the patient will in no case be allowed to participate in the study. In the second module of the CRF, the inclusion of the patient is documented. The compliance of inclusion and exclusion criteria is verified by laboratory values and the findings of an investigation. In order to document the state of the patient's health results of investigations, such as ECG, lung function tests, scans, urodynamic examinations, etc., are also recorded. Even vital signs and laboratory parameters are, at this point, once again documented. The administration of the study medication is noted in Module 2 as well. Here is an extract of a CRF from Module 2. As you can see, it is noted that the examinations of lung slash chest, heart and abdomen showed no findings. Moreover, vital signs such as pulse rate and blood pressure, body temperature and respiration rate are documented. At the top of the CRF page, you can see the study visit. Each page must be numbered with the patient number and the number of the trial site by the testers to avoid subsequent swapping of CRF pages. Module 3 of the CRF refers to visits. As in Module 2, the results of investigations such as ECG, lung function tests, scans, urodynamic examinations, etc. are recorded. Vital signs and laboratory parameters are also once again documented and the administration of study medication noted. In this module, the development of therapeutic success is measured by continually comparing target criteria with baseline parameters. This is the job of the data management. An example of documentation is, in Module 3, an asthma study spirometry is conducted regularly to compare the spirometric parameters with those of the baseline visit observing any improvement. So much for today. Module 4 and 5 will be explained in Part 2. We hope you learned something interesting about the CRF and are looking forward to see you next time. Have a great day! Hey there! Don't forget, like and subscribe, but most importantly, click that bell so you never miss another video.